Today's message does not begin with a joke so as to get your attention, nor does it contain an interesting circular story for comparison. Today's message begins with this question. Have you ever been in the place to where you didn't know where the next meal was coming from? Or even if you would have a roof over your head to sleep under when night came. Yes, I can truthfully say I have been there, and it was at those times I learned to rely upon the words of David found in Psalm 3325. Let me read it. I have been young, and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That is one powerful verse. But neighbor, let me stop and say, I am so glad you could join us for today's worship and renewal of the spirit. Now, getting back to our message. If you want to reap the benefits of living in God's protected bubble, a place mentioned in Psalm 91, let's just read it. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Friend, if we want to live in that place, we must seek to know, then live the life of a righteous person. Not a righteous person in man's eyes or even in our own eyes, but rather righteousness in the eyes of the Almighty God. With that, let's take a look at what a righteous person, according to God, really is. We can find it in Romans 1, chapter 17, verse. For in it, the righteous of God revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Righteous in this context is not a statement as we often hear of someone signing a statement of faith. Faith in this situation is an action. The righteous shall live by faith. But did you realize this? One cannot live by faith until they have accepted God's infallible word as truth. Read it, believe it. Amen? Often, and especially in our day and time, we hear someone say they believe this or they believe that. But unless those beliefs are based on the principles found in the Holy Bible— God could care less about your personal or organizational credences. Now, one might say, Brother Troy, I, I thought as long as we based our beliefs on love, God will accept us no matter what those beliefs may be, right? Wrong. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah confused love with sexual perversion, and God destroyed them. Righteousness comes from faith and believing and living. God's holy word. To further emphasize this point, let's look at another verse. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just live by faith. Now we need to look at what the Bible has to say about that word just. Before we read it, let me say this. I think the next verse was placed in the Bible for those who continue to come up with their own terms of salvation. Job chapter 4, verse 17. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Friend, it saddens my heart to know many of those who need to hear this message will never take the time to listen to it. And if they should happen to hear it, they will reject it. These people are committed to their own esteemed agenda, which Satan has provided them with. If you watch any form of TV or social media lately, it is plain as day the general population of America, the America the advertisers try to appeal to the most, this America would much rather see wrongness than to listen to a message about God's righteousness. More than once, I have heard a person say, rather nonchalantly, I know I'm going to hell when I die. It is at those times, friend, I feel like replying with, no, my friend, with a statement like that, you have already arrived. Just look around you. Folks, I know a message like this one today is seldom preached anymore. However, if this word given me by the Holy Spirit changes the direction of one person bound for hell, it's more than worth it. 
Neighbor, I want to end with this last verse coming from Psalm 89, 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your faith. If we put home in the place of the word throne, then reflect God's mercy and God's truth throughout, we will become a just and righteous person. A person of whom David said he has never seen forsaken. Isn't that wonderful to know? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for lighting our path with your righteousness and the principles set forth in your holy word. May you continue to refine us with your conviction by way of the Holy Spirit. Refine us until we become the kind of servants you would have us to be. We ask you, dear God, for you to give us in America a new hunger for you and your son so we may once more become a righteous and just nation. It is in your son's holy name we pray. Amen and amen.